So I was watching Chris Sean's um, live stream the other day. Chris Sean is a developer who vlogs about his life and about being a developer and things like that. Um, and he had, his live stream was about why he doesn't do coding tutorials. And that was a, it was an interesting, uh, interesting um, reason why and all that. But it got me thinking as to why do I still do tutorials? And I wanted to kind of elaborate on that because uh, if you don't know, my behind the code uh, interviews where I interview developers or tech professionals and my ask a dev sections where I answer questions or topics and things like that, exactly like this, actually get on average typically more views and require a lot less um, prep time. And to put it in perspective, this was a topic that I simply got from watching a video. I was like, oh, I, I think I could talk about this. And I, you know, kind of let it linger in the back of my mind while I think about it. And in terms of actual time I spent on it, it's really going to be this 10 minutes or so I spend talking about the video, editing and putting it up, versus the uh, the project I work on all this weekend, Saturday and Sunday, in total probably about 12 to 15 hours. Um, and a lot more brain power, right? A lot more of actual time. And uh, usually these get more views, um, at least at first anyhow. So, so they have been, some, some tutorials do better than others, but on average, the ask a devs and the interviews typically do better. So why do I continue to do tutorials? Uh, well, for one, um, that is my, my core audience, right? So there's there's something about being loyal to people who subscribe and are interested in free code camp content and wanting to put things out that subscribers would want to see. The um, second reason is because I'm, I'm still learning. I'm always learning. And I want to, the way I better myself uh, is by learning these things. And then as a bonus, when I feel like I have a decent understanding of how it works and I can help people out, I throw it up on my YouTube. Hopefully I make a little bit of ad revenue and it's kind of like killing two or three birds with one stone and I build my portfolio in the process. Now, in terms of YouTube specifically, I may actually do better just doing these Ask a Devs, but there's no reason why I can't do both, especially if I'm spending time learning and trying to master these skills, right? So I may do this video right now talking about why I still do tutorials, but what skills did it give me at the end of the day? Um, maybe it got me to have a little bit of a deeper understanding about myself and got to connect with people about the channel, but what did it help me with my resume or my portfolio? Very little. Uh, however, the skills I worked on this weekend was uh, Node, Express, MongoDB, and Mongoose. All back-end technologies to make myself a better uh, developer. It also gave me one portfolio project to showcase these skills and a lot of knowledge in the process. And uh, something I can show to potential future employers or current employers, right? To potentially make the argument of, hey, this is why I should get X amount of dollars at my one-year eval because I have these skills. Because I am a much better developer than I was a year ago. All these sorts of things. Um, but that is why I still do these tutorials. At the end of the day, I really enjoy doing them. I, it keeps me fresh. I learn a lot. I learned some ES6 just doing this stuff. I'm trying to get better with ES6. Um, Node, Express, MongoDB, Mongoose. All these sorts of things. And I, I appreciate helping people out when they're just getting started too. Um, a lot of mid-level or entry-level guys like myself who are, you know, they already got their developer job. They're trying to get better. We can figure it out. At the end of the day, we can figure out a lot of things and we don't need a video tutorial to do it. My, my, my channel is mainly, mainly towards those people who are just getting started or are entry-level developers and still need help. And the reason for that is because you, the, they are kind of the most needy, if you will. Those are the people who need the most help. And it's an easy way for me to do something fun. Some of it's review. And sometimes in that review, you're like, oh, you know, I forgot about that. And and you're like, oh, cool, I, I get it now. And, you know, it helps me just constantly maintain sort of that programmer's thought process. And in the process, sometimes I pick up some, some cool new tricks. But that's why I still make tutorials and why I, I do them, even though maybe perhaps uh, in the short term at least, they're not the best thing for the channel, but they are the best thing for me as a developer, and that's why I started this channel in the first place, is to become a better developer and 
uh, help me get a developer job. Now that I've, I'm working as a developer, I want to continue to get there. Once you're a junior developer, you should strive to be a mid-level to senior developer. And if you're a front-end developer, you should strive to be a back-end developer. And if you never touch QA, you never touch quality assurance testing, you should strive to know testing and all these sorts of things. And me doing coding tutorials and walkthroughs and things like that and showing projects that I do and walking through the, the steps of building it, it's not so that someone can go and copy my code and have their own project and try and then sneak their way in because you're only going to screw yourself. It's to, one, so I reiterate through it, and you'll see in my projects, oftentimes I find ways that I could have improved my code or that I could have added a feature that didn't occur to me or validation or whatever it may be. And two, because you will learn so much by watching somebody else. When I want to learn something new, I ask somebody who already understands it to walk me through it and give me the basics. I don't want to have to go and search through. The amount of time it would take me if to ask a friend to give me a one hour tutorial on Node is equal to about five to 10 hours on my own in reality. And they've already figured out the basics and that's really all you can get from a tutorial at the end of the day is the, the basics, the building blocks, and you're gonna run into all the all the shit in, <laughs> that all the bugs and the the quirks and, uh, along the way. But that's why I still do coding tutorials. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below, and maybe I'll answer them in a in the next Ask a Dev section. I appreciate you guys uh, watching the video. Don't forget to join our Facebook group, Code Tech and Caffeine. The description's in the link. And if you want to support me, you can at patreoncom slash 360 I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. If you're interested in coding bootcamp check out devmountain.com where housing is included in your price of tuition and don't forget to like comment subscribe and share and support me on patreon i'll see you guys in the next video thanks for watching